Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Dr. Larry Valero. He's the Department Head for Intelligence and Security Studies at the Citadel. Dr. Valero, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Scott. Pleasure to be here. I think we wanted to start off if you could just tell us a little bit about you and your work at the Citadel so far. Well, thanks, Scott, again. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm the Department Head for Intelligence and Security Studies here at the Citadel. I'm a relatively new faculty member. Uh, this is actually the third uh, intelligence studies program that I've led, uh, both here in the United States and the United Kingdom. I have about 20 years of experience in intelligence education, and I have uh, been responsible for developing a number of programs in this field, both at the graduate and undergraduate level, also online, as well as face-to-face. And I'm also the former president of the International Association for Intelligence Education. Seems like you're the right person to be talking to right now. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of intelligence threats in the United States right now, and they're constantly evolving. I think we've seen things, even in the past 20 years, really flip around from a concentration in the Middle East to, you know, even homeland and uh, great power competition. So, what sort of intelligence challenges is the U.S. facing here in 2021? Well, Scott, that, that, that's an excellent question, and, and you're absolutely right. Uh, we have seen uh, a, a pretty significant change in, in, in terms of what the intelligence community and the larger national security enterprise has sort of focused on. Uh, we've moved from largely a, a counterterrorism mission since 9-11 uh, to one that is uh, re-engaging with what we call peer-on-peer -peer conflict, uh, conflict with uh, other uh, potential countries uh, in a number of arenas, uh, economic, uh, political, uh, the cyber domain, and uh, elsewhere. So uh, this presents significant challenges uh, for the IC. There, there is a bit of transition. Uh, obviously, uh, not just in terms of a new administration, uh, but sort of a, a rebalance of, of focus. Uh, but by no sense of the imagination is, is the counterterrorism mission gone. Uh, we still are faced with some serious threats uh, abroad in terms of, of foreign terrorism. And of course, more recently, we're concerned uh, about terrorism threats uh, domestically with re regard to right-wing nationalism. So the intelligence community in short has very much uh, a diverse range of issues on it on its plate. And as, in terms of domestic terrorism, uh, you know, just a quick follow-up on that. How does the IC balance things like liberty and uh, freedom and, you know, privacy versus you know, really making sure and ensuring the domestic welfare and safety of people as well. Yes, uh, that's, of course, always been a challenge. Uh, you know, uh, the United States has always tried to find this balance between uh, uh, civil liberties on one hand and uh, sort of the uh, proper uh, level or scope of uh, domestic surveillance uh, in order to keep uh, the American public safe. Uh, it's important to appreciate that in terms of the national intelligence strategy, which of course is the highest form of, of, of strategy in the intelligence community, that finding this ba balance is paramount and protecting the civil liberties of all Americans is uh, an essential part of our government and is uh, mandated, of course, not just legally in a number of, of, of different uh, ways, but uh, constitutionally as well. Uh, we've uh, engaged over the last 30, 40 years uh, to ensure that our oversight system is relatively effective. Uh, coming out of the 1970s, we've seen uh, aggressive investigations into uh, abuses of the intelligence community, uh, resulting in permanent committees in both the House and the Senate. Uh, we also have executive oversight mechanisms in place. And uh, it's also to, uh, important to point out that the courts also play a significant role in protecting the civil liberties of, of all Americans when it comes to uh, domestic surveillance issues. We saw a, an interesting dynamic between the executive branch, the president, and the 
IC community over the past four years. Uh, you know, what is that? What kind of impact has that had on the IC, and where's the morale at this point? Yes, uh, you you bring up an excellent point. It it has been a, a relationship that has been under stress. Uh, it has impacted morale, at least as an outside observer, I, I, I've seen that. Uh, but the intelligence community has dedicated professionals in it that uh, have the best interest of the country, uh, the uh, security of, of, of the country at heart. Um, they know that there will always be uh, uh, challenges uh, politically, uh, regardless of what administration uh, is, is in office. But I have full confidence in uh, both the professionalism and uh, uh, expertise of the IC to weather any uh, political storm. Uh, I, I would also like to mention in, in reference to this, I get that question uh, quite a bit from, from students who are looking to uh, enter into intelligence community careers. And I, I, I try to assure them that this is an honorable line of work uh, that is really uh, dependent on uh, their future leadership and the skills that they can bring to the table in order to keep our country safe. On the flip side, could you explain some of the, the good parts about working in the IC and what's exciting about it right now in 2021? Yes, uh, annually, uh, the intelligence communities and, and, and the agencies that are, are part of it uh, rank very high in terms of the best places to work. Uh, there's a, a great balance between work and, and uh, uh, family life. Uh, I think the, the, the issues and the problems that uh, are presented to intelligence professionals uh, keep them motivated and excited about their work. Uh, you know, they realize how important uh, the uh, subjects that they're uh, assessing, that they're analyzing, uh, can have a, a great impact on, on policy, uh, our diplomacy, our economy. And as a result, uh, that uh, uh, is always uh, presenting challenges uh, to curious individuals uh, that, uh, that are part of the IC and it makes them uh, ever engaged. And as a result, you see, at least historically, individuals who are not just in the intelligence community for maybe five or 10 years, but work in the IC for 20 years plus. And I think that's a testament uh, to the quality of the workplace and the interesting work that uh, a host of intelligence professionals uh, do from uh, collections to analysis. Uh, it's, it, it's really uh, exciting work. So let's say that you're someone who is, uh, you know, young or someone who's ready for a career change, uh, how would you prepare for a, a new career in intelligence? That's, that's also a great question, one that I'm asked all, all the time. Um, there's no one single path uh, into uh, an intelligence career. Uh, I think if you were to, to poll uh, a group of intelligence uh, professionals, they'd all give slightly different answers to that, that question. One thing that they do have in common is education. Uh, usually uh, they, they uh, are, are uh, they have a, an excellent academic background uh, beyond in many cases, the bachelor's degree. Uh, so they have over time, both developed uh, uh, subject matter expertise through their on the job work uh, and, and, and training, uh, but also through uh, education at uh, institutions uh, like the Citadel. And I'm sure that there may be some more fields opening up at this point. I mean, we've seen cyber and space become much more of an operational domain. Are there more opportunities there? Yes, most definitely. Uh, uh, data science, uh, cyber operations are. Uh, very uh, marketable uh, right now. If you have skills in those areas, uh, 
they are very much in demand in the intelligence community. Uh, of course, space is, is important as well with the establishment of the United States Space Force. Uh, its intelligence element has just been stood up as uh, a constituent uh, member of the intelligence community. So yes, there, there are gonna be uh, opportunities uh, there as well, uh, not just now, but in the future. So the Citadel has an advantage because it not only works as a, an academic institution, but also has a military aspect to it. You know, how can the Citadel uniquely help people when they're interested in being part of the IC? Sure, we, ha we have a long tradition of uh, helping place students uh, into the intelligence community. Uh, the Citadel is nearly 180 years old, and it is one of six senior military colleges in the United States. Um, we have an excellent alumni network and the programs that we have are specifically designed to help students enter into uh, IC careers. But if they are already working as intelligence community professionals, our, our curricula is also uh, set up to help them advance in those careers as well. And when it comes to the COVID environment, uh, it's not always easy to get to the Citadel if you need to. Do you have different ways of teaching people as well? Yes, we do. Uh, let me just say something about our, our, our Master of Arts in Intelligence and Security Studies. It is 100% online and it is what we call asynchronous. In other words, there are no specific meeting times uh, uh, despite uh, being 100% uh, online, you have the opportunity to fully engage with uh, outstanding instructors who have both uh, professional and academic qualifications. Uh, our faculty have demonstrated over and over again uh, that they're the best feature of our opportunities uh, in terms of uh, continuing your education here at the Citadel. Let me just say this, even though we're a senior military college, and of course we have a core of cadets, um, we have opportunities here for, uh, uh, for civilian uh, students as well. Uh, we have an online VA completion program. And like I said, our master's degree is also uh, available uh, to non-cadets. Uh, 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 and again, both our online VA and our master's program and our graduate certificates in leadership, uh, cybersecurity and intelligence analysis are uh, fully online as, as well. So this is a, a great place, uh, not just for those who are, are cadets and maybe seeking a, a military career, but for uh, veterans, uh, for civilians who are uh, seeking to enter or advance in intelligence uh, careers. And do you see many students come in, you know, maybe later in life or ones that have left the military uh, and, and are looking to get into maybe a private sector kind of job? Uh, or, or are you mostly seeing young cadets that are interested in the IC? Uh, we're seeing both, but uh, our graduate program is, uh, uh, has a considerable number Matter of fact, probably the, the majority of them uh, have are, are mid-career professionals. In other words, uh, they are, are already uh, maybe have had a, a military career. Uh, maybe they have uh, had experience working as an intelligence and or law enforcement professional. And like I said, they're, they're seeking to advance their careers through graduate education. Um, they're also seeking uh, perhaps, a, 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 I, sh I should mention, not, not all of our students, uh, uh, whether they're undergraduates or, or graduates are, are seeking um, uh, government careers per se. Uh, some are seeking careers in, in business and competitive intelligence. Uh, there's a, a significant number of our students that, that want to pursue uh, that path. Uh, some are seeking uh, uh, to work in, in law enforcement intelligence. Others are, are seeking to continue perhaps their, their military careers. And um, 
And then others are, are also, like I already mentioned, seeking to either advance or enter into uh, careers in the intelligence community proper. And Dr. Valero, I understand that some of the students actually have real world opportunities as well. What sort of work are they doing out uh, within the intelligence community itself? Doc, what we try to do with our, our online programs uh, as, as much as possible is uh, mimic the real world of intelligence. Uh, so uh, our, our curricula and the courses that we, we, we teach uh, follow the intelligence process, uh, very much like uh, you would see inside the intelligence community. Uh, so there, there will be a tasking uh, for a particular problem. Uh, there'll be the collection of open source uh, information uh, the processing of, of that information uh, to put it into a usable form, and then uh, the, the hard analysis of, of, of that information or data. Uh, we, we teach our students uh, how to use uh, uh, methodologies, structured analytic techniques that are common in the intelligence community uh, today. Uh, and then uh, we ask them to produce a, a variety of, in, of intelligence products, much like you would see, again, in the real world. Uh, we use uh, a format known as bottom line up front. So whether the students are uh, giving an oral briefing or they're uh, giving a short intelligence report or perhaps a, a longer uh, intelligence estimate it will follow this format uh, that, they are, that they are taught bottom line up front. Uh, uh, we also try to utilize uh, different software uh, in, our, in our online and uh, classroom environments as, as well uh, in, in, in terms of face-to-face uh, -face, uh, opportunities here at the Citadel. Uh, we've had uh, some, some success in obtaining uh, grants uh, uh, from uh, uh, different uh, uh, federal agencies, uh, and we beta tested that software using our students. Uh, hopefully that software will then be adopted and employed in uh, real world settings. So our students are really at the cutting edge of uh, utilizing uh, these uh, uh, real world techniques, uh, but also uh, these technologies uh, that they will see uh, in the workplaces as well. Well, Dr. Valera, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Scott. I really appreciate you having me. I'd like to once again thank our guest, Dr. Larry Valero. He's the Department Head for Intelligence and Security Studies at the Citadel. I'm your moderator, Scott Massioni, and you're listening to Federal News Network. For more information, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search Citadel.